Hello, welcome back. This is Calculus by Dr. Oz. Today uh, we are going to have another application of uh, Taylor's Theorem. Uh, Taylor's Theorem is used uh, to approximate uh, functions uh, by using uh, their Taylor or Maclaurin uh, polynomials. And we have a specific description of the error that we make by uh, replacing the function with its uh, end uh, Taylor or Maclaurin uh, polynomial. So, uh, specifically speaking, uh, we have the function e to the minus 2x, uh, uh, which is approximated by uh, the Maclaurin expansion of order 3. Uh, we have p3 uh, of x. Um, so now the question is that, for what x values this expansion is good enough to make an error not more than 10 to the minus 3? So, is, is this expansion true for all x, or just for some x's because here the expansion is done uh, in the expansion is done for c equals zero so this is the Maclaurin expansion so how far can I go from c uh, so that I can pick x values and plug those back in the, the Taylor polynomial uh, and Maclaurin polynomial in this regard 1 minus 2x uh, plus 2x squared minus 4x cubed over 3 uh, so that whatever the Maclaurin polynomial spits out would be like a good approximation of uh, f of x. So, um, so let's get started. Uh, I'll, I'll give you more details uh, in the video. All right, let's start. This is another application of the Taylor's theorem. Uh, we're trying to uh, use the Taylor polynomial uh, for the function e to the minus 2x, uh, but the Taylor polynomial uh, is up to, up to an order, okay? So here, so in fact, uh, if you want to write down the uh, Taylor polynomial for e to the minus uh, 2x, that would have a lot of tail terms here, right? But all I can see that here, this is uh, looking like uh, it's p3 of x, okay? And then there's also r3 of x, uh, like, like this way here, right? This is, this is like pn of x plus rn of x, the Taylor polynomial plus its tail. And a tail is estimated by, uh, by this quantity here. Uh, that's the strength of this theorem. Uh, and then that z, the number z here, is a number in between 0 and x. So uh, what we want to find or figure out in this problem is not how many terms we're going to retain in a Taylor polynomial to get an error uh, less than 10 to the minus 3. But one, once we know how many terms we, we retain uh, in a Taylor polynomial, so uh, how accurate um, uh, the, the values of uh, the approximated uh, Taylor polynomial uh, to the actual values of f uh, with the error, uh, like how accurate means like we want to keep it at the level of 10 to minus 3. So how far we can go from uh, c because uh, when we expand the Taylor uh, polynomial, we take some number c. And, and x should be around that, right? X's are around that. So, so the question is like, how far uh, can I go uh, uh, from C uh, so that uh, the, the approximation by using the P3 of X would be accurate up to 10 to the minus three, okay? So this is an alternate version uh, of the application of the Taylor's theorem, okay? So, uh, well, first of all, I don't need the Taylor polynomial because it's already written. But I, since I need the description of Rn here, and, and in fact, uh, for n equals uh, 3, uh, so that means I need to go to the, uh, the fourth derivative here. So I need the fourth derivative of the function. So why don't we find the derivatives starting from f, f prime, f double prime, triple prime, and the fourth derivative, right? Because when you write R3, fourth derivative is needed. Okay, so f of x equals e to the minus 2x. The first derivative is negative 2 e to the minus 2x for negative uh, e to the power of negative 2x. By the way, you can just pause the video and then you, you find those derivatives with your own pace. So minus 8 e to the minus 2x and then 16 e to the minus 2x. Okay. All right, so let's write r3 r3 of x is equal to the fourth derivative of f evaluated at z uh, well divided by 4 uh, factorial 
Um, this is the Taylor expansion uh, at uh, zero, uh, at zero, right? Yep. So that's that's going to be uh, x minus zero to the power of four. Okay, so c in that regard is going to be taken to be zero uh, in this problem. Okay. And let's just rewrite this quantity. So this is. 16 e to the minus 2z divided by 4 factorial x to the fourth. Uh, well, one thing is that z is a number between c, which is 0, and x. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm going to make the analysis revolving around this. All right, I copied down uh, r3 of x back here, so uh, we can work that out here. So let's simplify this a little bit more. Well, 4 factorial is uh, 24, okay, to start with, okay. And this becomes our 3 of x is uh, 2 over 3 e to the 2z x to the 4th, and I use the reciprocal uh, of e to the uh, negative 2z, that's 1 over uh, e to the 2z, so, okay. And normally we are taking the absolute value of this and we're trying to majorize that, keeping in mind that uh, this expression uh, will be smaller than 10 to the minus 3. Okay? And z is in between 0 and x. So to majorize this quantity, you want to make the bottom smaller. An exponential function is a growing function. So And z starts from 0 going all the way x. To make it smaller, z must be 0. Okay. If you choose z to be zero, this quantity uh, is going to be uh, majorized. Okay, so this becomes two over three uh, uh, x to the fourth, and you want it to be less than uh, ten to the minus three. Okay, so why don't we multiply both sides by? Um, so let's just copy that down here. I want to solve this for x. Um, so let's multiply both sides by 3 halves. So x to the fourth is less than, this is already uh, 0 0.001. Uh, 3 halves of that is going to be 0 0.0015. Okay. And if you take the fourth root of both sides of this inequality, so go ahead and uh, calculate the fourth root or one fourth power they're the same things right of this so that on the left you have x on the right uh, if you do your uh, calculation that should be point 1970 approximately okay so what that means is if well x is already greater than zero in this case uh, but you can also put the absolute value in so let's just do that as well, okay? Let's put the absolute value in. So if the absolute value of x is less than 0 0.1970, then this, uh, this uh, the, the, the Taylor polynomial, uh, which has only four terms in it, that means we're talking about P3 of x, would, would be replaced by e to the minus x. But again, as long as x's are in between uh, the absolute value of x is less than 0 .9, 0 0.1970, which, by the way, uh, what does that mean? Uh, well, what, what that means, let me just write at the top here so that everybody can see it. So, minus 1.1970x plus 1970. So, if you choose x's from this interval, see, like, this is a very small neighborhood of zero because we originally started with... Uh, c being uh, 0, right, because this was the uh, Taylor expansion at c equals 0. Um, so c equals 0 here, uh, right? So I'm just clean this to explain this a little bit further to you. I tried to make an argument here, but if c equals 0 here, and um, if c, let me just write this from scratch. So expansion was at c equals 0. So now, so the question was like, how far can x uh, uh, go uh, starting from c equals zero to the right to the left. Okay, so um, and, and we just proved that uh, minus point nineteen seventy here minus point nineteen seventy here. So you can only go this far to the left to the right. 
So let's say like if I want to find the value of uh, e to the minus 2x at, let's say, uh, x equals 0 0.3, this wouldn't be a good approximation because the error is going to be larger than 10 to the minus 3. But if I want to find or estimate uh, e to the minus 2x at 0 0.1, well, 0 0.1 is right here within this range, right? Uh, so then I can rely on to this polynomial evaluation at 0.1 uh, to estimate the value of uh, the function at uh, 0.1. Okay, so this is how you take the analysis uh, here. So essentially we wanted to check uh, the, the, the expansion's validity um, uh, in terms of axis. Okay, All right, I think, uh, I think that explains everything. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, forward those questions to me. Um, I think that's the end of the video. I'll see you in another video. Bye.